My friends, hello and welcome to GoldenEye Speed Lore. Tonight is the night, the very first episode covering the history of DLTK, GoldenEye's most difficult challenge, Max Settings Mode. Truly an utterly insane way to play, let alone speedrun the game. But my friends, what is DLTK, or Dark License to Kill? Why is it called that? Who invented it? Who was the first to complete a stage like this? Well, we'll learn all the above and more tonight, so settle on in and enjoy this episode, episode number one of GoldenEye Speed Lore. Now. In order to understand what DLTK is, we must first understand what LTK is. LTK is a mode called License to Kill, and you may have seen this mode of playable in your multiplayer matches. It's a very common mode in multiplayer where one shot kills. That's basically what LTK is. No matter what, one shot kills. Now, the question is, could we emulate this in the single player mode with the 007 mode options. And the closest we could get to is basically these settings on 007 mode. You unlock 007 mode by beating all of the 20 stages in the game on double O agent. So you get all the way to Egypt 00, beat it, you unlock 007 mode, as well as the all guns cheat. And, um, and the golden gun cheat. So that's pretty cool stuff. That's like your reward for beating the game. You'll, you basically get to play any sort of mode, any style you wish. You can muddle around with all these. You know, it's fun to toggle enemy health down to zero and everything down to zero and just, you know, you, you can't pass away. Guards can't hit you. It's great fun. But as a challenge, people came up with this license to kill mode, which emulates the multiplayer license to kill mode. And so with enemy health at zero, all the enemies pass away within one shot. With enemy damage at thousand, anytime you get hit, it does 10 bars of damage. Now, of course, we'll, we'll know that you only have eight bars of health. And so taking 10 bars of damage would usually pass you away. If you have a body armor, you can survive one hit because a body armor doubles your health to 16 bars. And, uh, you know, 10, you can survive one hit of 10. So, LTK became this very interesting mode that a lot of people participated in over the years. And to demonstrate LTK, I found this, you know, facility run, you know, a, a decent, you know, nice quality run of facility by a fellow named Ghostbus. Now, this was achieved a couple years ago, but it would show what a early facility LTK mode run might look like. And so it's a very challenging mode, but a mode where players could pretty, you know, pretty much beat a lot of the levels. You know, they'd have to be careful and think about it. You know, you can see he's being very strategic, you know, being very careful. The enemy accuracy is 100%, so if a guard so much as shoots at you, they will almost always hit you, unless, like, they've set their line, and you've, like, moved out of the way of the line, like, behind a wall, something like that. And so, you know, it becomes this very strategic, interesting, skillful mode, and it's a lot of fun for a lot of people. And so... Most of the levels gotten beat, had been beat, you know, throughout the history, early history of the game. And so players began thinking, and one player in particular began thinking, you know, could we come up with an even bigger challenge? And the bigger challenge is, is DLTK, and we'll see that in, in a few moments. So we can see all these, and some of these strategies may come up again when we see some facility DLTK runs. But, um, you know, you still have to rely on things like RNG, like Dr. Doke being in the right spot to get a good run. Well, Gankle, you may be in for a big surprise. 
perhaps that player who who conceived DLTK was in fact not Perfect Ace. Yeah, we we might get into clubs. I'd you know clubs are kind of an exception to the rule, so I'd rather you know we we'll get into surface one a little later, so we can talk about clubs then. Oh my god. Yeah, there's a few quirks that I think we'll get into, if not tonight, you know, over the course of DLTK Speedlore, we will get into these. So there's a little facility, LTK 207 by Ghostbus. Very nice example run. Feels like it's been a while since we've seen example runs. So that's always nice. And we can see the settings here were enemy health zero, damage a thousand, accuracy and reaction speed a hundred. A lot of people wonder what reaction speed is, and you think like, oh, is it like how quickly they notice you? What it actually is, is the speed at which they recover from injury. And so on LTK it doesn't really matter, because they all die after one shot, but on DLTK it matters a lot. You know, you can't injure a guard in the leg, and then he slowly um, backs up and you have time to like breathe his reaction speed at 100%, he like quickly recovers no matter what and gets back to firing at you. And we'll probably see some examples of that um, a little later on. So, LTK levels were beaten, you know, um, throughout the early 2000s, 2001, 2002. But in 2004, a new challenge was conceived, a challenge that some may have thought was impossible. You know, scrolling through the LTK um, history here, it looks like, you know, Surface 1 LTK was beaten in 2002. Most of them were beaten oh, in, in, not back in 99. Most LTK levels were beaten already, so. You know, LTK was like a very natural kind of way to emulate the game. Streets LTK 2002, um, jungle, Aztec, a lot of these, you know, even the, the levels you would think would be harder were beaten in 1999, which is pretty cool. So, the community had mastered beating levels with these settings. Now, a glaring question is, what if enemy health was at 1000%? What does that mean? What does that do? And so, if we look at this thread, the very first post ever made by Illu, he asks this. I've never posted on any of these boards before, but I have played GoldenEye since it was first released here in Europe, and I still do sometimes. Most of you who hang around here have probably played and discussed this game to death. Almost anything I say has probably been discussed many times before. But anyway, I was wondering if you know anyone who has cleared a stage with the hardest settings in the 007 difficulty. Man, this post is so good because... It really harkens back to an era on the internet, like in the early 2000s, mid 2000s, when it was like, you know, lurk more was the biggest lesson you could get. And Illu was clearly a guy who lurked around and was humble in his knowledge and was like, hey guys, like I'm new here. You guys probably already know this or you're really good, but like, you know, hey, like, you know, I want to know more. Nowadays, you'd see people who think they know everything, right? We, we see this all the time in YouTube comments, especially at the dawn of speedrunning. People would always come about and think they know absolutely everything. Um, and this Illu post is just so good because it really counterbalances that sort of approach to the internet. Now, one thing you'll notice that's kind of weird in this topic is that, like, Chervone has the OP, but that is actually a glitch. And... What's unfortunate is that the Elite Forums were originally hosted on a board called EasyBoard. I'm sure if you Google it, you'll, you'll find the early history of EasyBoard or something like that. And somewhere in about 2005, early, mid-2005, EasyBoard like got hacked and a lot of posts were lost in the process. And so a lot of early posts on the Elite Forums in like the years 2002, 3, 4 have been are lost media, essentially. They've been lost forever. And EasyBoard eventually got transferred to a, a, a forum system called Yuku, and then now we went and hosted our own forums on Simple Machines. And so, like, they're completely lost. Like, we're talking stuff that was lost 17 years ago. It's not coming back. 
And so in this thread, we only have a few weeks of posts built up before, you know, this big vacuum where there's no more posts seen. And so in these threads where a bunch of posts were missing, a lot of times the OP like got warped to the top. I'm not exactly sure why. One of the forum guys might be, you know, that might be more of his pay grade. But Cervone's post here was not the original OP of this thread. It was this Illu post. And what's interesting is if you go to Illu's post history on the Elite, uh, you know, do not investigate too much. But um, you, we can see this is very, if we go all the way to the end, this is his very, very first post ever on the forums. And, you know, his next handful of posts are all in this thread as well. Asking, can we beat 007 difficulty with enemy health 1000 and all the other stats maxed? Right, pretty natural question. Now, his first reply is a, is a silly reply from an old guy named Shep. I've done mo most of them, but I use the gold PP7. And funnily enough, Illu says, you know, that's pretty good still. Like, that's pretty impressive. But I meant without any cheats or weapons. You know, I'm just wondering because I've done it on the facility. That's quite a bombshell revelation here that Illu claims to have beat facility with maxed stats um, with no cheats. And this person who's since, you know, got rid of their account says, you know, we have an entire league for LTK settings, you know, so that's pretty cool. And there's a little bit more conversation. Illu posts his end screen. Wouter asks for videos. And we have a pretty natural progression of um, discussion on this topic. Now, what's interesting is I, for a long time, when I was like first conceiving to do DLTK lore, I thought that there was a video made of this time, 857 on Facility, DLTK. But as far as I can gather, there never actually was. It wasn't lost media, it was simply never made. The, you know, but I guess the discussion made people believe and tried themselves and realized that it was possible. And so the very first DLTK video that I could dig up was on facility, but it was not done by Illu. It was done by yet another fascinating legendary early character in the community. It was done by none other than the legend himself, Wouter Jansen. Wouter was the first one, as far as I can tell, to provide proof that still lasts to this day of beating a DLTK stage. We are about to watch Wouter complete facility with the maxed settings in three minutes flat. And, you know, there are only so many runs we're going to watch tonight. And so this very first one we will dedicate to a speed lore champion. And I saw him in chat here moments ago. We are dedicating this one to our speed lord champion, Sul Arak. A huge thanks, Sul, for supporting speed lore on Patreon. The next evolution of speed lore. Let's uh, let's see how Wouter pulls it off. So you do have five remote mines. And so that's why facility is a great sort of starting point to see if you can beat the stage. Those mines help a lot. And we can see he's using clever strategies and these will become consistent <gasps> over the course of DLTK using explosives to eliminate groups of guards. Yes, and boxes. And you, you, could, you could hear there, like, a guard began to shoot at him. But he was quick enough to back into the... And look at this. He used the lockers to eliminate one guard, and then he did 10 headshots on our guard. And so that's the thing. With enemy health at 1,000, that means they require 10 headshots to pass away. 
And so the strategies on these levels become either... Yes. With body armor, they take more than 10 headshots. So here's a great example. And see how quickly he recovers? He hides around the corner, and then three more headshots. And so most of the time, you will have to either gather up a group of guards and eliminate them with an explosive, or pull off 10 headshots one-on-one. -on -one. And if you ever get them grouped up, you're pretty much toast. So he peeks from the corner, not enough time for the guard to shoot him, backs up around the corner for safety, and then is ready to, to, to blast him away. This right here is like an iconic DLTK strategy. The way the doors work, they can't, the door doesn't open and they're not programmed to shoot through the glass, but you can. And so you lure them to the door, they can't pass through or shoot you, and you can take out four at a time. Like that's like the iconic scene of DLTK as far as I'm concerned, especially in the early time. Now here is interesting, because now Water doesn't have any mines. And so he has to be very careful because he has to shoot out the tanks manually. However, they leak gas, which does damage to you. It does a bar of damage like every five seconds. It really does a lot of damage. If you, if you try yourself, you'll see how quickly it adds up. And so he might take some of that damage, but he has to shoot the PD-7. Because if he shoots with a KF-7, he risks luring two guards from that left side staircase. They're up top there. He pulls it off. And we're in. And amazingly, facility three minutes. And now he's got to go back and show us the uh, stats here. Full, full, full max stats. And with this moment in time... Wouter prove to everyone, like, oh my god, it actually is possible to beat these levels with max stats. It's insane. It's a huge challenge, but it's possible, and that's really, really cool. I mean, Kings, that was something that was known about for, like, ages, honestly. Like, since, like, 1990, since the game first came out, people knew that, like, you could press A and B to detonate the two mines. Like... It's one of those funny mechanics that, like, some people play their whole life without knowing, but other people, like, did it day one, you know? So it's, I know, it is, a, it is, it's a weird thing, but that's the case, you know? That is the case. And so, Wilder completed this on February 4th, 2004, which is, uh, which is, <laughs> which is pretty epic. And, um, yeah, I mean, it's... It's a, yeah, same as that's a good point, Flicker. Same as back switching. So if you press A and then Z, like a, f a couple frames later, you back switch in your inventory. And like Mark Rutsu didn't know about that till recently. Like Mark Rutsu played 10 years, got many untieds, and never knew about that till very recently. So like it's great point by Flicker on that regard. And yeah, it's just kind of funny how, if you look at this old thread, like Illu's so earnest, he asks if he should make a video about the, his 857. It doesn't seem like he ever did, and then I guess it's because like him and Wouter would later go on and get faster times than 857. Yeah, no, Jazz, right? That's a very reasonable guess. Is that like um, Nintendo Power probably would have told you about those tricks, you know? And yeah, Calm Wins. That's very fascinating that Wouter got this DLTK speedrun, the first ever recorded and lasting DLTK speedrun, on the day Facebook was la launched. You know, what a historic day! You know, maybe someday this will make it to Wikipedia under February 4th. Wouter Jansen completes very first run of GoldenEye Dark License to Kill mode. <laughs> so, the next day, Wouter would complete a second level on the on this difficulty. And, yeah, you know, I'm actually going to take a, a look at the, the, the thread here because... It is a huge shame that so much information was lost. You know, Illu's talking about here, this guy, Utrev. I mean, I remember this guy, only 35 posts, it's crazy. And then, um, 
you know, they're talking January 30th. So this is before the video we saw. And then um, there's a great post here we'll get to in a second. But unfortunately, there's a few, <laughs> there's a few posts. And then the form just skips to June 2005. So we have a whole year of law, a year and a half of lost posts. I love this post by Jimbo, our beloved, hapless, and in this case, skeptical Jimbo, who says, I somewhat doubt this achievement because I doubt you have enough PP7 ammo to take out the number of guys there really are in this level. Even if you use mines for big groups of guards, you'd eventually have to use the KF7, which is loud. <laughs> Judging by the amount of time you've seemed to have played Goldeneye so far, I doubt you can pull off 15 PP7 headshots on one guy. That's really funny because, you know, Elu would eventually go on to pass Jimbo on the rankings and, you know, okay. <laughs> loudness of the KF7 results in lots of clone guards after you. Like, this is true. You know, with 100% reaction speed from these guards, you'd eventually get overwhelmed and killed. That's all true. V you know, in fairness, he does say, vid online, I am pwned. But until then, I think you're full of crap. You know, Bix, we may see Bix come up again. I took the toilet guy out after two minutes of slapping him. Let's see how this goes. We got a vintage, you know, 2004 era post here um, from Golden Greg. So that's, you know, what can I say? That was the intro at the time, for better or worse. And it, here Boss comes in and says, Hey, Jimbo, have you ever heard of blowing up boxes for ammo? I could see it being done on facility. Of course, Boss would be proven to be correct and so that's a really cool look at all these um early early posts and moments in in this nascent thread of of dark license to kill and you know we can even see that they didn't even call it dark license to kill yet right the but by 2005 we had called it dark ltk or dltk and it's just kind of a natural thing like perfect dark has this whole, you know, dark mode or whatever, you know, this theme of darkness, you know, the, the, the wave of darkness. And so it makes sense for something extra difficult in Goldmine Perfect Dark to be like, given that modifier of dark, whatever, you know, so that's cool. And uh, hey, that's the forums we've got for tonight. And now we're going to get on to a whole bunch of threat uh, videos. And these are going to be all the levels that were completed in February and March 2004. The next day, Welder would get to the level Surface 2 DLTK. Surface 2 is very easy because there's only a few guards you have to interact with. Lots of the guards have Clobs, and Clobs only do 60% of damage, so you can survive one Clob hit. It's also a very spread out level, so you can get far away from guards, so they like are always running to approach you rather than shooting at you and we'll see surface 2 dltk it's like the, it's it it is now known as the easiest dltk level to beat and we're gonna watch that level and watch that run in one second and yeah mystic i mean that's a very good little knowledge i you know my perfect dark knowledge is a little lacking so the hardest difficulty bought in the combat sim in perfect dark are called dark sims so you know the hardest difficulty dark that's kind of where it comes from so let's take a look at Wouter beating Surface 2 DLTK on February 5th, 2004. And let's dedicate this speedrun to another longtime speed lore champion, our good pal, Mr. Moxie. A huge thanks, Mr. Moxie, for all your support. And uh, let's watch this epic run. Yeah, most people's first DLTK level will be Surface 2. And I think it might be the only DLTK level I've ever officially beaten. And so he's gonna run over and shoot at the camera and eliminate one guard in a hut. With ten headshots and get double clobs. And then he has to show up three more cameras in the computer. I know, it's, it, it's, it's like easier than half of the LTK levels. So another technique is if you get really close to guards, they sometimes won't hit you either, which is very cool. So 
from, I guess they, like, you're too close for their hitbox to, like, hit, and so they're shooting kind of past you. So that's it. It doesn't always work, but it is a useful technique in DLTK. And so I'm sure we'll see that come up, you know, a fair bit tonight. Yeah. That's a great question, Engage, and, like, Flicker would probably have better knowledge on that because he's beaten a lot of the DLTK levels, as I'm sure we'll find out throughout more episodes of this. Oh, because he's- that guard with a KF7 just didn't see him, which is insane. Like, I feel like- I feel like the levels we're gonna see early on in this lore are gonna be the, you know, boring four equivalent. They're gonna be the easiest ones to beat, the most natural. The ones that the players thought, you know, this might not be so hard, let's give it a shot. And so you have to land- you have to clutch out this mine here. This is the war. 202. Surface 2. DLTK. There's the max settings. Now, something that I find interesting here that's kind of worth noting is that he got 202 here. 202 on Double O Agent would unlock the cheat on this stage, which is. Um, tiny bond. I think it's 415 on double O to get the cheat. However, on facility, the cheat for invincibility is 205, and we're at three minutes. So you can imagine, like, in theory, the goal, the far out goal of beating facility DLTK in 205 or lower would be, like, a very cool goal to have. And does it ever happen? If so, how many episodes deep into DLTK lore will it will it be until we see that run? I guess time will find out. Okay, that's interesting. So Flickr chimes in and says that Surface 2 and Archives are the easiest DLTK levels to beat. I believe it, and an Archives run may be around the corner here. So, yeah, cool run, Surface 2 DLTK, very easy, and let's um, carry on. Okay, this is actually going to be a cool one. Um, so. I think a big key for a lot of people when they're thinking at this early stage, you don't know what can be beaten or not. One thing to think about is like levels that don't have infinite spawning guards, right? Obviously, spawning guards are going to be very difficult to deal with. They do happen at facility at the end of the Ormov sequence, but like you can beat that without it. Um, you know, oh, that, that's a great point, JWK, I forgot about that. Um, so, levels without spawning guards are, are ones to key in on. And so surprisingly, one are keyed on on Bunker 1. Now, it does have spawning guards at the end, but I guess the idea is that, like, you can lure one guard away at a time, deal with him with 10 headshots, some slaps, whatever it takes, and as long as you can, like, do this very sneaky technique of one guard at a time, it gives you a good shot at being the level. And so, Wilder focused on Bunker 1 DLTK, and on February 8th, he got this speedrun, which is a very cool and epic speedrun. And, um, you know, it, it's, it's a lot longer, but we're going to watch some long vids tonight, which is kind of cool. And so, I'm going to dedicate this one to our speedlord champion, 4 Day Bender. A huge thanks, Four Day, for all your support. Let's watch Wouter slowly but surely complete Bunker 1 DLTK in maybe double the target time. So he shoots that out. And yeah, he is going to slowly lure one guard at a time to this room and i'm i'm imagining this is his technique for probably the entirety of this speed run and we, we can see that you know in the early stages it was much less speed running and a lot more completing it was a challenge to complete it 
about a week before this. Oh, there's a nade. That can be so useful. The black hatted guard to pull a nade. That's so useful. I'm sure he'll make good use of that later. Or at least attempt to. A week before this, Trent H claims he beat this level in 16 minutes. And so that probably, there's no video of that one, but that probably inspired Wilder, like, okay, maybe that one's beatable. Let's give it a try and see what happens. Yeah, I mean, I would say more of a control troll dovetail. You know, it was more of a joke prank video, but yes. And, and he was influential in his own right in one way or another, you know? Oh, that was, that was cool. We got with two nades. It's very useful. So at least two guards passed away there. I wonder if it'll lure any guards in. I think Wilder's still around. I, 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 if you're thinking of someone who hasn't communicated in years, I think Wilder has. No, it's very true, you know, um, I mean, this big room's gonna be tough, but, you know, a lot of people are pointing out how it almost becomes like a horror game, and it's, like, very true, like, it's, it, especially early on when these strategies were not, like, no one knew any strategies that worked, it was all, like, playing it for yourself. You can imagine many of these runs progressed five or ten minutes in, and then you just died from a guard, like, far away, sniping you. And so, see, Welder's, like, not even sure if he blew up that camera. And so, yeah, it, it's totally... And, and, like, the guards are... You know, they take ten shots to be eliminated. You know, it's not... They're not quite, you know, Lovecraftian beasts. But they're, like, pretty close, you know? Some inhuman behemoths who can survive nine shots to the head. Even more if um, they have body armor. Oh man, that is really tough because the guards can hit you. Even though the angle looks wrong, the geometry of like the ceiling isn't perfect, so the guards can hit you from down that hallway. And then what's interesting is Boris can actually leave this room and fail the mission. I'm not sure if I've ever shown that in a lore before. I don't have a clip of it tonight. But like Boris sometimes on, especially on DLTK, which takes time, he can just, like, decide to book it, leave the bunker, and then you fail. And so, like, that can totally happen at this point in the level. You know, and that Sewell, that's probably exactly why, like, Wouter was one of the earliest ones to play and get videos. Um, it's a, it's a cool side league. And it's, you know, there are interesting side leagues that people play in these days, like, how quickly can you get an objective to fail on screen? You know, objective failed on screen, it's called. 
or your know, fast exit. How fast can you leave the level no matter what? And, um, you know, but they're not, there's some sort of, nothing feels as official as like the, the, the straight up mode agent, secret and double O agent. But like, LTK and DLTK feel pretty decent. It doesn't save your best time or anything, which is why they're not quite as cool. But like, it's a mode, the settings are always the same, there's no cheats, it's a completed level, you know, it feels pretty cool. I guess Wilder doesn't want to go up there because there are two guards up there, and I guess he just like, doesn't want to risk dealing with them. So he's trying to lure Boris off of that platform, which may or may not work, like... Okay, so it has worked. Good idea to, like, leave and unload Boris there, kind of. Oh, yeah, so Boris... A, a key about DLTK is that the NPCs can survive a lot of damage. And so, like, Boris, Natalia, etc. Hostages, they can survive a lot of damage. And so, you don't have to really worry too much about... Um... Them passing away as much as you would on Agent or Double Agent, for example. Oh, I don't think we're gonna get to jungle tonight, SMG, but like, that will be a trip to watch the, the first completion of jungle. Okay, cheers may be used, have a good one. So this is gonna be very interesting, because when Boris hacks the mainframes, three guards who have body armor spawn. And then the problem is, if one of them dies, another one respawns in his place. So Wilder basically has to survive this level with three guards chasing after him. Who endlessly spawn. And so this is going to be quite something to see. And I actually don't know how he does it. So there they're coming. One. Two. Oh my god, this is scary. Three. Oh my god. <gasps> Dude, that was actually insane. Dude, that, that would have given me a heart attack. And that's so true, SMGs. He had a hard time warping out, and it's like the guards could have came back and, uh, and, and pwned him. Now, the reason the Clob Guard didn't hit him here is because, like, he started shooting on that line, right? So, Wilder got lucky that the guard kind of had a slow animation to shoot. Because once he's locked in his animation, that's the line he's shooting on. Now, like, a rolling and shooting animation similar, but, like, sometimes he'll just straight up shoot quickly. But because he had the slowish slow -ish animation and that line, Wilder was able to get off the line quickly enough where the shots missed. And kind of get, like, behind him as well. And so that was just luck. Like, Wilder may have passed away numerous times attempting to beat this level before. Um, <laughs> so that's really crazy. And I'm actually surprised that, like... He didn't come and pwn him here. You, oh my god, you, you can hear. You can hear the you can hear the claw being shot as Wilder has just closed the glass door behind him. Listen closely. Yeah, you would probably need to shoot this guard like five or six times for him to get stunned. Listen closely for the claw. Wow, that was insane. Yeah, Dovetail, if you check the rankings on the Elite.net, you will be able to um, find the video from there, so thank you. <laughs> I showed it a number of times before the stream, so it was pretty epic. Yeah, there we go. Thanks, Gandare. So that was insane. 
that was insane and epic. Water got Bunker 1 deal to K. And, yeah, I mean, the exact order of which levels were completed may not be 100% the way we're doing it tonight, but I am showing, like, the videos that still exist in the order of when they were completed. Like, Trent H claims he completed a lot of these levels on February 1st, which, you know, is a little bit before, um, you know, a week before when this video was was recorded. But, you know, as they say, not that I don't believe it, but, you know, no vid, no did. Um, who knows, my friends? Who knows? So, the same day, though, as this one, February 8th of 4, Wouter would actually claim to have beaten a second stage, and this one he had video of. Pretty cool. And this one, it looks like he was actually the first to beat, so no one else claimed that they had beaten this before him. This stage is indeed Archives. Archives. Flickr says Archives is like the second easiest stage to beat nowadays. It makes, it makes sense it was early completion. This one, I'm pretty sure you kind of just YOLO it and hope to survive, and it does happen more often. Like, it does happen, you know, at least somewhat often. Because the rooms are so tight and narrow that it's easy to, like, get a behind a box or around a wall and avoid getting hit. So that's probably what we'll see here. But let's watch it. So while we're being archives deal to K in February 04, this one goes out to a Spieler champion, Sammy Limex. A huge thanks, Sammy, for all your support of Speed Lore over the years. Let's take a look. I think he may shoot out this locker. And like, that was partly lucky. They both rolled. The, the chair and, um, you know, the, the chair and the desk were kind of protecting him. He was able to run past the guard's animation to not take damage. And that's pretty much how you play Archives DLT today. There's all these boxes. So it's it's a very tight and like skill intensive level. But you run past that guard before he has a time to react. <laughs> it's crazy. <gasps> that door's open. The ghost door. I think ghost doors are more common on DLTK, which, like, goes to show that they're probably not actually ghost doors and they're, like, opened by guards being lured. Now, here is pretty troll, because if a guard comes in, you can't shoot too much, otherwise A, Natalia gets scared and runs away, or B, Mishkin pulls a, a weapon on you and fails the, fails the uh, objective. So we have to hope that guards only come in here. And I, I don't know if that was a guard or if that was Natalia. I guess it was a guard. Yeah, a lot of times on Dilt, okay, you gotta get a bit lucky. There we go. Facility DLTK 122. Yes, no, totally, Irene. That, so that I mean, I didn't know that it was that specific. Like, if you're if he sees you shooting, that's the problem. You can shoot like behind him, but and yeah, SMG. So that's the thing, right? Um, this is 120. Two 120 is the invisibility cheat time. So you wonder if that will ever be beaten on the stage, maybe. So, like, that guard just doesn't have enough time to react and shoot before he's behind this bookcase. There are two guards in here, but, like, same thing. He's out of the way already. This one, again, he, he's past him. The guard's gonna start shooting now, but, like, it's too late. And then this guard, I guess he probably is aiming and shooting at you there. And then because you can run by, yeah, now you're behind his, his muzzle by the time he's begun shooting. He just, the guard just didn't have the right line. If he was a little bit further away, he almost certainly would have killed you. But because he was close, Wodrick was able to run by fast enough. So that's pretty epic. And then, was there a guard that came in here? And boy, if you thought this was epic, we, <laughs> we still have two 20 minute runs to watch. That's going to be fun. So is that Natalia or a guard? I I feel like Natalia runs towards you.
Maybe the guard, maybe it was a guard who turned around there. Thanks, Apollo. Interesting, Irie. Insane. Wow, it's amazing. And so, <laughs> yeah, crazy stuff. Um, a lot of great runs, very cool seminal works in the DLTK section of Goldeneye. Now, this one is, I would say, like the classic of all classics. This, like, VHS layout is so cool. It says Hideo instead of Video. Like, I don't know if that's Finnish or Swedish, but, like, that's pretty wild. <laughs> and, um, this is Illu beating the Time Water Gun facility. And just the, the way, that, like, the, this is, like, the earliest Illu video capture possible. And, uh, let's take a look. I'm pretty sure there's no audio, yeah. But it's really cool. This was February 20. So it's been about two weeks now, and I think there's been no new completions, or at least none with videos that are still exist today. So that's really cool. So instead of going right downstairs like Wetter did, Illu lures guards out and then destroys a box to pass away like three guards or four guards. He chucks the mine in there, but not too deep. Otherwise, it would blow up the console that he needs to open the next door. And so we can see, like, these strategies are becoming super creative. He lost a bit of time there because the door closed behind him, which is unfortunate. Because it was the angle... I'll go back after the run, Irie, but it was the angle of the stairs. It was He was, like, slightly around the corner is what happened. As far as I'm concerned. I mean, that's getting into deep lore, Irie. I didn't even know guards have a left or right-handedness. So that was quite a little time save. He just decided, screw it, I'm just gonna go... Oh my god! I'm just gonna run past this guy before he has time to, um... Shoot me. That's cr Dude, Irie, I didn't even know about that. That's insane. And now we have this situation, which is really epic. Dude, it really is Guan Yu breakfast. It totally is. Well, that is insane, SMG. Oh, so he took a little bit of damage from the fire. See, so he's pinched behind the wall, behind the door here, shooting through the glass. No, it really is V Sweat. Yeah, stairs are weird, right? The geometry in this game, we're still in a 90s video game. The geometry isn't perfect, and so you can get... The stairs and angling of walls and stuff can save you a lot in this... In DLTK. Like, there are two guards I'm surprised didn't pass him away here, but... And I think he might still have at least one mine, which, like, would help significantly. Because then you'll also, like, shoot four tanks instead of all ten. But I'm not sure if he does. So you just shoot these two from up here. Which is probably a good idea. Maybe he doesn't have a mine. And he's going to like YOLO KF7 the bunch. And hope that he can destroy them before the guards are lured. Is that the case? Nope. Maybe that kind of idea comes later. Okay, so here's the KF7. So like, we may see these guys come down the stairs here. As the level fades out. Yeah, see there he is. Oh my god, but he'll but he lose out and wins. 2.51. So he beat Wouter's time, but certainly not at 2.05 yet. There we go. Max stats, baby. It's tr truly amazing. Facility DLTK. So, yeah, this time 2.51 would actually hold up for, you know, several months, if not longer. And, um, again, we'll cross that bridge when we get there, but certainly this is, 251 is the time that will end this episode uh, as being the record. But, of course, there are still, you know, th a handful more levels to show. Oh, yeah, the two guards who almost hit him. So, this one, 
he wants to wait to get as many guards lured out as possible. And, um, no, it's so true, bros. And then, so, you know why he missed? Either he's, like, around the corner of the stairs, or the angle of the stairs is affecting the shot. No, it's so true. If you if you were to watch a session of DLDK, like, 95% of the runs, the guard, you're going to pass away. And then this guard here was pretty close to shooting, hitting him as well. But like, see, he's like kind of figuring out where your line is and he doesn't shoot yet. He like, went, okay, so what happened is he went there to shoot you. Like he's trying to shoot you in this position now, but you've moved and now he's like readjusting his position and then he passes away. Something like that's what happened there. So crazy stuff from Malu on Facility 251. Pretty amazing stuff. This one's cool. It has a song in it, but I'm going to leave it in. I might have to edit it later. So maybe Twitch exclusive. And um, one level that we haven't seen yet where there aren't any spawning guards. I think it's the only level where guards don't spawn nor clone. So they can't even be duplicated in any way. Some some levels, like Dam, for example, there are no spawning guards, but you can get cloned guards by making noise. I'm pretty sure on this level there are no cloned guards possible. It is Frigate. Frigate, baby. Lafayette. And, uh, again, no in-game audio. This was February 20th, 04, so same day as the um, facility one. But let's give a listen and check it out. So guards can get lured on this stage, but I'm not sure he will do much of that. You only start with 20 shots as well. So he needs to be very resourceful with his ammo. And so he didn't, you saw that he didn't shoot the guard. He didn't shoot the guard and the, he let the, sh the guard shoot the hostage. But because the hostage has so much health, the hostage does not pass away. So that is helpful on um, Frigate, the LTK. You can like bide your time by letting the hostages shoot the guard, shoot the hot, by letting the hostage takers shoot the hostages. I know he shot a console up there. I'm not sure that it freed a hostage. I'll go back and take a look afterwards. I think it may have, and he may have been able to hear like, the guard pass away in that situation. There are like three guards on the other side of this room, so it's a good idea to use a nade there. He got the nade from like the first area. I wonder what he's gonna do here. Is he going to try to get 10 headshots? I guess so. I mean, pretty impressive. He got 10 crouching. Wow, he did it. That was very effective. Really mystic. That is insane. I didn't know that. Is it, like, common where they do that? Now, an advantage is that the guard, you know, gives you a second or two before he shoots the hostage, so you have time to shoot him without being too scared of, like, him shooting you first. There isn't our guard there, but, like, he got lured out and then, um... Oh my god. You know, Illu was gone before the guard could shoot. So now he's saved five hostages. Oh, that's crazy, Irie. Yeah, I've never really played Frigate Deal Decay, I'll think. So now he has to go to the bridge. I wonder what he's going to do here. Because there are many guards. Oh, I, that's a good idea. He went in and let the guards shoot to destroy the consoles and blow up and probably one or two passed away. If anyone knows what music this is, I would love to know too, because I don't know. And I guess the other guards left. 
That makes sense. Like, this kind of sounds like Echo, but the first one didn't sound like Echo the Dolphin. Objective A completed. In. Done. We did it. Two fifty two, pretty pretty good, pretty swell. And there we go, the first ever frigate deal taking completion. It makes sense that um well so what's funny, Irie, is that no, this hostage never got released, is what I'm seeing here. Check this out. This hostage, I don't think it moves. See, hostage escaped. You never see hostage released come up because what happened was this. Uh, right? What happened was he goes in, lures the explosion, which passes away the guard there. The other two guards leave to go look for you. So that hostage never gets released. It's another hostage escaping, which is pretty crazy. And like, yeah, so early on in this room, what he must have done was like, he goes over here, that guard shoots the hostage, but doesn't kill him because they have so much health. Now he starts running away at you, but he dies in that explosion. So that's like a pretty ball, and you'll, well, probably their hostage released. I missed that in the first watch through. So that's like a pretty creative technique there, right? To, um, because I, I wonder how consistent it is. Like the timing has to be really, really good. And to do something so technical in 2004 is very impressive. So very cool stuff. The first ever frigate DLTK completion was in um, February 04. And there would be, believe it or not, there would not be another frigate DLTK completion or, you know, faster time set for two more years. That's very impressive. At the same time, I think early on, people probably just want to beat a level and then kind of um, be done with it until, you know, competition picked up a little bit more. So Xantheon, they would have equivalent, so every NPC has 10 times the health they have on double the agent. And so the guards are probably programmed to shoot them like three times, which would kill them on double O, but it doesn't kill them on DLTK because they have 10 times the damage, 10 times the health, you know, so that, and there's actually a funny video I'll show another time, not tonight, of like Natalia having so much health you can do really crazy things. So that was epic. Now, another... There are two more levels that, like, naturally would make sense as levels you could plausibly beat because there aren't any spawning guards. But they are complex levels with tons of stuff to do. One of them is Bunker 2. You know, it's DLDK lore, foundational, seminal episode... We're going to watch this entire run. It is over 20 minutes in length. And so, you know, why not? It's an epic, heroic run. The first ever completion of Bunker 2 TLDK. <laughs> Let's dedicate it to our one and only Speedlore Apotheosis E Street. A huge thanks to E Street for your generous support of the series. I hope you enjoy this. 25 minute dedication run of Wouter on March 3rd, 2004, beating Bunker 2 DLTK for the first time ever. If you thought Bunker 1 was like a horror game, you know, this one is gonna be unbelievable. So he runs out here, grabs the knife. And again, because he's so close, he's not taking damage. It's probable that he, you know, uh, he would try that in a number of times he would get killed by that guard. But yeah, the knife is going to become very valuable. And so I think a lot of this is going to be Wilder luring a guard here and then like dealing with them one at a time here. There's like 25, 30 guards on the stage. No, it's so true, Cal. It's so true. Because it's a chaotic level that has a lot to be managed. And it's very easily... It's very easy to, like, get caught in the chaos. Bunker 2 Double O is one of the harder Double O levels that people get stuck on. It's so true. As they say. Oh, 
and all these slaps. I think it takes like 50 to 70 slaps. I wonder how many guards he does slap. I guess he was willing to risk the knife on the first guard for the sake of time. And you can see, like, as soon as you open the door, the guard is gonna, like, see you. I'm surprised he just doesn't chuck all the knives, because... They do a lot more damage than slaps. And... You can pick them up again. That's the beauty of throwing knives. Oh, that's a great point. That's very interesting. TX Air. R. I had no idea. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah, but I guess you could do some fiddling with the door opening and closing, but like, yeah, I, I totally get it. I wonder how many guards he slaps like this. I can't imagine it's more- like, there's so much to do in this level, I can't imagine it's more like 10. And like... <laughs> it's known now that if you can slap guards from behind, it does more damage, but it probably wasn't known at this time. I mean, it's just a very intense challenge, bros. Oh my god, this is insane. Oh, wait, is he gonna risk shooting? Like, obviously, you know, it's 1 or it's 04. I just feel like you could have knifed him once or twice more there. But, like, fair enough. I, I think he's in a risky spot because if another guard saw him, the guard would be coming in the room and shooting him. And, like, maybe that happened to Wilder on some runs, you know, could have very easily happened to him. Yeah, if you guys think this is something, just wait until we get to the first ever completion, if it happens, of Train. <laughs> That might just be one entire episode, honestly. Oh, that's... See, I really, like, I did... Like, I knew that intuitively, but I didn't know the technicality behind it. It's like, if you slap and then, like, back up and then slap again, or, like, you know, wait some time... You do notice that, like, guards just don't die for, like, ten slaps. You mean, it's kind of funny, bros, how, like, I had forgotten after, you know, 60 episodes or whatever that I had shown a couple DLDKs before on Facility and Archives in lore. But, like, this one I had never seen before in my life. Like, we've, we've never shown this run in, in, in Speed Lore, you know? Yeah, totally, Irie. Dude, Gander, it's so true. Yeah, V-Sweat, I, I think this episode will end up being around two hours long, which is, like, pretty ideal, I would say. We have another 20-minute run, and then, like, four shorter... Uh, three shorter runs to show, so... And, you know, I kind of want to keep... Oh, so he's shooting guards now, which is probably wise. He's got enough ammo. Yeah, yeah, totally, Irie. Oh my god, so... He's down to three knives, which is a little bit kind of, like, scary, I would say. Yeah, no, totally, V-Sweat. 
and you know during this series i'm gonna try to keep each episode to around one and a half two hours and kind of do it chronologically instead of one level at a time you know so i can always try not to pack too much into a single level into a single episode but like um some episodes literally maybe one one run so that'll be quite something to see yeah i mean the thing is guan yu is these are wilder runs mostly and so Oh, that's so true. Yeah, no, it's it's kind of known now that some of these doors have gaps in them that guards can shoot you through. And so it wouldn't have been, like, that well known at the time. It might have been intuitively known. So again, that that guard started to shoot, and then water kind of covered behind the wall there. I think it might be, I think I looked them up briefly before this, SMG, I think you might be right. When you again, that's a bridge we'll cross uh, when we get there. Oh my god, I would sh I would shoot him. Oh my god, there's. I thought there was two. I thought for a second there was two. Oh my god, he's talking to Natalia now. This is insane. This is true insanity. Ooh, it's not. It's it's not the LSU. It's something else. So, dude, it's so funny, the conversation with Nat. It's like, you rarely see this whole conversation play out, you know? <laughs> it's actually, like, really surreal and epic. Seeing the entirety of this infamous... Your in-game lore play out. I swear there was more to their conversation than this. Which is kind of funny. There we go. Passed away. Like, I feel like he talks again and talks about his plan. Oh my god, the, another guard did come in the room. That is insane. The Clob Guard. Oh, that's so interesting, TXR. That is, like, deep in-game lore. That the whole stomach ache escape plan is no longer in action because the first that only happens if the first guard is still there. And I guess we may not actually see the whole, um... conversation. No, it's so true, Justice. Like, Perfect Dark DLTK is different because headshots are adjusted in that game, where they do more damage, even on DLTK with max settings. You know, it's interesting, TXR, because there's, um... Sort of a video I've wanted to do for a while is, like... You know, I've been inspired by the Luigi Bros Zelda videos of, like, you know, 10 really rare facts you don't know. About Zel about Ocarina of Time or whatever, and so I wanted to do a similar one for Goldeneye, and like so that's actually a really good one. I'm gonna have to write that down if I remember. Well, ten you gotta treat it as 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 um eighteen you gotta treat it as ten. Yeah, true, true flicker. Oh, that's that's wild, Justice. That sounds like a lot of work. <gasps> He got hit by a clob! Dude, we saw it! That's insane, the six bars of damage! What's epic now is that there is no body armor on 007 mode. On the English version. On the Japanese there is, and so if he got another body armor he'd have ten bars of health again. And so he could survive another clob, or even one full shot to ghost health. Yeah, it's true, camp. It's true. Yeah, no, that's true too, Iris. They could... Like, you can... You easily get hit two or three times in a row. 100% accuracy. I'm pretty sure, like, Aztec Double O has 100% accuracy. 
And so, like, you often get hit three or four times in a row there, too. You know, as soon as your invincibility frames wear out, you get hit again. Yeah, I don't know exactly how everything works as far as the watch mechanics, but yeah, totally. Like, I don't know how far of a range it has to pick up stuff. Yeah, no, I'm pretty sure Aztec Double O has like 100% accuracy guards. From my personal experience. <gasps> oh, my god, oh my god, the guard jumped. Like, that was so, like, I, I guarantee you, Louder and others lost runs there and had to play the first 10 minutes all over again. It's, it's true, Xantheon, there's a weird way in how, like, slaps stack damage, kind of. So, it's a great question, and I hope that one of the, you know, knowledgeable TSers can figure that out and in an upcoming DLTK episode I can, like, explain it. Oh, Big Tommy, that is such a great... That is such a great guess if it's not 100% true. It's like... When they do a new animation, yeah, it resets, like, the value of the slap or something. Dude, this is crazy. I know, bros, I know. It's insane. I mean, well, you know, Dan is next, so, like... You know, <laughs> GG. So, I don't think you can get hit through the... through the closed... cell. I'm pretty sure you can't, although I would... maybe be incorrect. When you can, Irie? That is so nuts. Okay, so it's it's uncommon even on DLTK for them to hit you, that makes sense. Like if you're standing still, they might do it. I've lost track of how many guards we've slapped here. <laughs> oh yeah, I think I think it's like six-ish. I guess Waterpress be there. I feel like we gotta be, like, getting close to the end of the slapping. Because, like, he still has the entire level to do. And what's kind of interesting is, like, another difficulty... ...is that back in 2004, it was not easy to share a 25-minute video online. Like, YouTube didn't let you upload past 15 minutes until, like, you know, a few years later. So the, I think I think you know, that's a great point. I think the knives sometimes do like warp through a wall or fall through a seam somewhere, or they just like are in a corner and you like never see them there. Yeah, flicker exactly. Like most. So I think there are some DLTK videos from like 2006 
God, we're uploading parts. Like, part one, part two, part three. Oh, that'd be so good, bros. If the end screen showed total slaps, it'd be amazing. And, like, just imagine getting sniped there, which, like, I'm sure happened to Wudder numerous times. So, the cell is mostly safe, Dash, because it's a place that you can, like... Where no guards naturally come. And so, you can just slap away safely. If he could very well just do this slap in a hall, but there's a chance a patrolling guard might come and see him and, and kill him, you know? That's true, too. You can make infinite noise here and guards aren't lured. That's a great point, Irie. Oh my god. I think I would have shot him in the hand through the door there. And that might be what I, what um, what I was about to do. Oh my god, this is insane. Is that gonna work? Yeah, that works. Yeah, we will, like, you know, over the course of these lores, we will see some <laughs> more advanced slapping techniques. And in fact, if you have really deep knowledge, you may know some of it from the jungle episode. And Liu had a realization in, in when playing jungle about something from the LTK experience. had it exactly. Yeah, good day, you hand or everyone who's joined partway through this strange and unusual speedrun. So, Dash, no one has ever completed a DLTK single segment run. I think LTK may have been done, or attempted at least. Okay, so how many times has LTK RTA been completed? And how many times did he die on that run? I mean, that'd be a cool one to talk about sometime. That makes- I mean, it is the kind of thing you would complete once and move on. So, single segment is beating the entire game from start to finish without, like, in instead of beating one level at a time, you know, in, in a, you know, individual level setting. So that took 13 shots to kill that guard, and so it's like, you can, it's like, even though a guard takes 10 headshots to shoot, you can generally assume that, like, the average to kill a guard will be more than 10 headshots, because, like, you might miss one. And so, you know, you'll need to at least, if you start a level with zero ammo, you'll need to at least shoot one, you'll need to at least slap one guard, or use, like, an explosive or something. Okay, good. Nice sniping. I think, yeah, that seems reasonable. Great play. That was a great play. I mean, DLTK, like, we eventually you will realize why a DLTK single segment run is probably never going to happen. Yeah, and I think I think that's fair game, bros. Like, let's say, let's say you were playing a single segment speedrun, and you're like, it's gonna take more than a day, so I'm gonna let the timer run my sleep. I think that's completely fair game. That's a good question, Justice, and I don't think it does, but it is a good question.
Oh, that's intense, Flicker. That's crazy. Like, I don't think the location of the slap matters unless it's on his back. Which is, like, counterintuitive. But, like, what you eventually find out is that if a guard isn't... Ex if he doesn't notice you, one slap in the back usually kills him. Oh my god. Oh, now he's gonna go in here? Oh my god, this is... Oh, this is... A oh my god, this is risky as hell. But, like, a great idea. Oh my god. Oh, I thought he was gonna use the mainframes, but, like, that's a good idea. You have a double barrier with the door. That's well played. He still has a lot of stuff to do. Now, is that true on DLTK, Irie? Like, I doubt it, but it... I don't know. I wonder how much it matters. I wonder how many fewer slaps it results in. Well, Irish bub, you're in for a crazy one here. This room has like eight guards in it, so I don't know what he's gonna do here. Oh my god. Oh, I'm surprised he did this. Oh my god, this is so ballsy. Because like, how does he know that all the guards to his left are passed away? Yeah, like, it might make it, like, half the sl Like, the first slap from behind might do the damage of, like, 30 slaps, Siri, And so it, like, only takes 40 slaps. Like, that might be the case, but... Oh, my God. Oh, that he had the clipboard. That's so useful. Oh, my God. So now he doesn't have to go into that room and pass away all those guards. That's so useful. That's, like, genius for 2004. I know, right, Dovetail? I know. <gasps> and so the Clob, it only does 60% damage, so that includes on, on guards. So if it takes 10 headshots to eliminate a guard on DLTK, with a claw, it would take like 17 or something. Oh my god. Is that everything? Okay, he needs Nat and he needs to do the last camera. The reason you don't want to free Nat before this point is because she can run in the way and like you accidentally shoot her. Or, like, other trollery takes place, you know? So, like, that's why you do not want to shoot Free Natalia until you've done everything. Now, he still has, like, five or six guards to deal with out here. He's just making sure no one got lured. Yeah, it's so true, Cal. It's so true. He's just double-checking everything. He thinks a guard might be coming. And a guard is coming. Oh my god, he knew there was a guard on the loose. Oh my god, Natalia could get in the way and die. <gasps> we should- Oh, and here- Another insane thing is Natalia's in this room. Oh my god. She can trigger a thing that counts down 90 seconds. And then the level blows up. Oh my god. Yeah, it's true, Irish. She can survive like 10 headshots, but like, yeah. Dude, because... Because Wouter missed the warp there... You can hear the guards make it to the glass door and open it... And almost shoot him and kill him. Like, see, they don't notice him until he shoots this out. 
Now they notice him, he closes it, but listen. If he missed the door, if it was like one more second, he would have died. Which is insane. Wow. Okay, yeah, so we have another 20 minute run and then three more runs. But I mean, that I need to catch my breath after that, you know, like that's insane. <laughs> that was simply unbelievable. That is by far the longest run we've ever witnessed in a speed lore episode. The next one is not quite as long, although it's pretty long, but it's just not qu quite as long. So another level, which is similar to Bunker 2 in that there are no spawning guards in general. Now, mind you, on Bunker 2, you can get spawning guards if the camera sees you and the alarm goes off. That's GG on DLTK because you have five guards with body armor who come in. And they have 100% they have accuracy even on double OH at those guys. So it's insane. <laughs> Yeah, that would be, you would be so toast. And they're so leggy as well. They have sunglasses. They're like Yanis Special Marines. Um, but a similar level in this regard that's complicated, but there's not much risk of spawning guards, is Dam. Dam is also a very long level. I think there's 46 guards, sticks out to me. Now, you can get guards cloning from the basement if you make a lot of noise in a certain spot. But other than that, you're fine. There are a couple problems with Dam in that it's a very open level, so guards can snipe you from really, really far away. So that's a huge concern. <laughs> but if you can get through that or find a way to pass through it, you can probably get to the end of the level and like slowly but surely take out guards one by one and beat the stage. And so early on in the history of DLTK, they managed to do it. Ilu beat Dam in 35 minutes, 30 seconds, on March 6th. He then improved his record by 9 minutes by getting 26-29 on March 8th, which is this video. It's in his, like, classic, very early Ilu webcam capture, which is really cool. But there's just, like, no in-game audio, and for 26 minutes it's a lot. And then Wouter improved this a week later, which also contributes to why I'm going to show the Wouter run instead. And Wouter beat it in 21.33. And so... Now it is time to watch the Wouter Jansen damn DLTK 21.55. Let's take a look, baby. Out of the frying pan and into the oven. That's the saying. Out of the frying pan into the oven. That's a great question, Gandir. Now there's a sniper here. I'm betting he sh shoots these guards from afar to lure them closer. If he were to just run down there, they would shoot him from afar and kill him. But see, by doing that, he lures them towards him and can get like cleaner shots on them. Dealing with two guards at a time is like quite scary. So it seems reasonable to do it the way he's doing it here. No, it's it's so true, Dovetail, and like... I think that's a good way to put it, a regular gamer wouldn't be able to do it. Because there are still very good gamers, obviously. In fact, like, if you 
agree in like all sports that in the the median professional athlete is better today than they were you know generations ago which is probably true it's the same with gamers like the median professional gamer or very good gamer is better than the median one 20 years ago but by qualifying it by saying you're regular gamer wouldn't beat levels on double O. Like, that's probably true. You know, just imagine if DLTK was, like, in official, official mode back then, or even the way it was in 2004. But imagine, you know, Kotaku being around, writing an article about, like, you know, some poor sap trying to be the level of DLTK. You can just imagine it being really, really funny. Yeah, there's a guard ult. So, I mean, you know, as Flicker pointed out, on Dam, you do get the sniper, which helps. It's hard to tell from here, like, if he's passed the guard away, but if you were on a CRT TV, you could probably get a good sense of it. Oh, he's running after him now. And they're, I guess Wetter's just gonna say, I'm not gonna risk it, I'm gonna go back here. Look at this cover he's found. It, like, like, obviously, the main line running is insanely skillful. We know how good the records are. But, I mean, this is really cool to see, too. Like, I've, I've not watched these really old DLTK runs. Like, that's so interesting to see all these strategies come together. And, like, they would have been very intuitive strategies, too, because these sort of advanced tactics hadn't been sorted out that deeply yet. You know, I'm sure when we get to modern day DLTK runs, we'll see really advanced uses of, of techniques and strategies. But at this point in time, it just wasn't the case. It was all intuition. And there is a problem upcoming. <laughs> nice XSE Supreme. The problem upcoming is that once he passes through the double gates, there is one guard who spawns at you from behind. And can be a very big problem. And we got a guard just fired from far away. That's kind of scary. And so we're going to see how... It's like one guard runs towards the alarm. And another guard spawns. And so that is a bit of a thing to juggle and deal with. As you going to pass through the double gates here. And I also wonder how he's going to deal with the tower guards. That's going to be kind of crazy as well. Can he get a shot on this guy? So he's switching to PP7 ammo, which is... He doesn't get any replenishing PP7 ammo. But I guess he knows the KF7 ammo is more valuable. The ammo for the KF7 and Sniper is interchangeable. And so I guess he knows that's going to be more valuable later. And so he's going to PP7 this guy. Although, I don't know how true that is, because you might want to be quiet later, but... Anyways, it is what it is. So here's a big score. These crates have ammo in them. Yeah, and like, you kind of get a bit unlucky SMG if they don't both blow up. Mind you, it usually does a little bit of damage to it, so, like... Look, now he has 115 shots. Like, that's really nice. Making sure he's got all of it. Oh, that two blew up there.
Okay, so he's blocked the truck. I don't know if that prevents the guard from spawning. I don't think it does. But this is chaos. Yes, that's a big positive SMG. Yeah, Gander, you would only see it naturally in speedrunning on, like, Silo Agent sometimes, maybe? I'm gonna assume that he doesn't go into the little building and eliminate the DD4 guard. I'm gonna, like, they don't get lured out very easily. So we can probably destroy the alarm from afar, not lure them out, and then just skip them because it's it's not worth dealing with them. Yeah, like that doesn't lure him out. Oh my god, is he gonna go through the sideways bug throw? Oh my god. Dude, imagine he missed. Ima imagine he missed that. <laughs> yeah, true Irie control agent, you get you get all that ammo too. Oh, dude, great headshots. Dude, I'm just thinking of some insane DLTK runs like that we're not going to see tonight. But, like, you know, I've been really enjoying this so far. And, like, I'm assuming we're just going to do the whole history of DLTK, hopefully, you know, God willing. And, um, it's good. some of them are going to be insane. So this is a great example. They can't shoot you through the, through the gate, and it opens towards you, so by standing there, you prevent it from opening. So this is a very useful spot. It is, it is random as far as I know, Gander. As far as I know, it's random. This is a, now, I don't know if this is a cloned guard. This guard may be being cloned from around the corner, which kind of sucks, if true. And another problem is, there are guards on both the right and left of him here. So that's a bit scary to deal with. And they don't lure out very easily. Like, they only lure out kind of within the range of where they are at first. You kind of see that on, if you remember my damn double O runs, you run past a guard and he'll be in a similar position to where he was when you ran by him. It does kind of, it, yeah, Mystic, it's kind of random and kind of figure eight, like. So this guard has body armor. And so the 10 headshots only counts from when his body armor's gone. It takes, like, several headshots to remove it, and even more limb shots. And now the guards kind of trolled him because he's not in a range to be... There we go. You gotta get a little peek on him. And you can see the handedness. If he was opposite-handed, it wouldn't be as risky of a shot here. But because he's, like, whichever hand he is, he could have got hit. Yeah, and so Wilder's using Control Saw 1.1, which is sometimes advantageous on DLTK because you can move more slowly and precisely. You know, the movement is analog as opposed to digital, sort of. It's the stick as opposed to the buttons. And so you can inch your way forward in ways you cannot on um, 1.2. I mean... That technique of back and forth is probably pretty safe, but, like, you could probably get shot there, I would say.
That's interesting, SMG. Yeah, I think you can peek all the way down. If you're, like, that far away around, like, several corners, if you can get a peek of an arm, it's unlikely they're gonna shoot you, but they definitely can. Like, this hallway is super scary on damn LTK or DLTK. <laughs> Oh, nice. And the way the guard's AI works, like, it's a big thing on Aztec, obviously. is like, they remember your position, where you shot from, or where they last saw you. Oh my god, I would- I, I bet, bro, this may be more. Like, look at this insane dipping in and out. And a thing on dam is there are no explosives. There are boxes which you can use, but there are no explosives. It's the only level where nades, oh, and train, where nades don't spawn. I think they spawn on Bunker 2. Like, only the spawning alarm guards can throw it, but I'm pretty sure that's true. Oh my god. So he's getting pretty close to clearing out these guards here. One thing I imagine we'll see is like, you know, on double O agent, you run up the last tower and then like shoot the alarm and go to the middle one. You would encounter more guards that way, and it's only like, you know, as if speed matters at this point in DLTK's history, it's only like two or three seconds faster than rather than going up the first tower again. So I assume we'll go up this tower again, and then he wants to deal with the two tower guards on the you know, top of the dam. So once he makes it into the mainframe room and completes that objective, I assume that is what we'll see from there. No, it's so true of TX. Again, it's all like natural skill and intuition at this point. You know, you don't know any cheeky technique. I mean, discovering those techniques is is insane, and like completing the levels are, is still insane. But yeah, totally. It's just like thinking about like early golfers using literal wooden clubs and stuff, you know. Oh my God. You know what, Rod Jones, you, you, we are about an hour and a half, two hours in. But... 
there's still a good deal of cut there's still three or four more runs to get to yeah gander that does so many um so much you can get hit three or four times in a row like that on double agent no so rod we're doing it in like chronological order of completion and so we have seen like 10 you know eight or ten deal to k runs so far we have like three or four more after this but there's still a good deal of meat left on damn double o here Thanks, secret cow. I mean, this too, seeing these runs really show you, like, how good Wouter was at this game back then. Oh, Rod, you know, a spoiler alert. But you could check Twitter or the Elite Rankings to see if something remarkable may have happened before the lore started. Oh my god, he can barely- I think there's two- I think there's two guards left. There's this guard and his buddy. Oh my god, there's this guard too. This is insane. <gasps> Thanks, Haynes. It's insane. You know, good call, Toxic. Good call. The elite rankings will give you all the news you need. So I think there's one more guard. Oh no, so I guess I guess he lured up the other guard earlier. Good idea getting some more ammo. Okay, I think there's like four-ish guards in here. It's like this does risk cloning guards for sure. There's like him and there's like one or there's like two by the mainframe, I think. And there's a patrolling one as well. I think that's four. Let's see. Oh my god, this is kind of crazy. Like, I know if you, for a fact if you just shoot here a bunch, you get clone guards. I wonder what his total kill total will be, because he left the two in the first alarm building. There's probably like three or four in the basement he's not going to get to, because he's going to skip them by going back upstairs early. But he did get some cloned guards on the first gate. I think he left a guard alive there. That was pretty gutsy. I'm pretty sure there was at least one guard in there, beside the mainframe. And, like, fair enough, maybe he doesn't get alerted if you just do that. Like, that makes total sense, but, like, I'm pretty surprised. Yep, that's correct, Rod Jones. Yeah, he's, like, behind the mainframe. Oh my god, because the tower guards kind of, like, randomly see you or not, you know? I'm mean, look at this very slow-paced shooting as to not... Like, the noise factors in, like, how quickly you're shooting, which is kind of weird. So by shooting slowly, you're less likely to lure the guard. But, I mean, wow, that was... <gasps> the guard was shoot Like, he could have died there easily. Like, sometimes you would just get bad luck and that, that would, you would pass away. Oh my god, it's insane. 
2155, baby. Unbelievable time. What a rush. <laughs> Amazing speed run. Wouter, damn DLTK, 2155. It's truly amazing. It's truly amazing. And I mean, I would love to sit back and catch my breath, but you know, we got three more runs. Let's get to these three runs and wrap it up. Um, and hey, onward and upward to the, this was a lot of fun already and we're definitely gonna do more DLTK episodes. So I'm pretty keen on how comfy this has turned out to be. Interestingly, the next level we're gonna see completed is kind of a tricky one. And it's insane in that there have only been four world records ever set on the stage in 20 years. Runway DLTK. Obviously, Runway is going to be a very, very finicky level because, like, there's lots of guards. There's not really any good way to eliminate them one by one. It's a very open space. But if you can make it to the tank, the tank provides you a lot of health. I don't know exactly how much health the tank gives you. But I'm sure one of the, you know, scientists can look into it. There must be, like, a formula that tells you how much damage, you know, less you take on the tank. Now, mind you, even in the tank on DLTK, you can still only really take, like, two or three K of seven shots, I think. So it is tough. But, you know, let's just watch it. Four hits with tank, okay. And they do still shoot you a lot. So you need to like strategically fire shots at them and whatnot. This is maybe Brandon Sanford's best time ever. He got 55 on January 31st. No video. Trent claimed 54 on February 1st. Then a month and a half later on March 1504, Brandon Sanford, Bix of Twine fame and other Elite Stories fame, got this speed run. It's, it's legendary. Only one person has beat it, I think. So you chuck the nade there. Grab the key. Like, that makes sense in that, like, the guards, you know, they have to choose a reaction. You can escape before then. I wonder why he shot three times or if that was just an accident. Yeah, so only one person has beaten this in 18 years. You could make a case that's like one of the best times ever performed. So he shoots a KF-7 guard, he shoots the tank, he gets hit once. Shoots another KF-7 guard, shoots another KF-7 guard. Shoots the battery. Shoots the drone, shoots the drone. There's a guard there, but he's the line was off and he completes the level. And it's one of those things where it didn't look that insane. But if you try this yourself, you'll probably get to the tank fairly easily. But you will pass away all the time from KF7 guards. Yeah, it's insane. Like, <laughs> I should try it myself. You know, eventually, when we, when, you know, I, I've already revealed that this time does get beat. And so eventually we'll wrap around to the time that does beat this many years later. But it's only been performed once by one player. And so, when we get to that episode, I will dig in more about what makes this so insane. Like, this is actually... I mean, how many records are there like this on the rankings, even in DLTK? that were set in 04 and have only been beaten by one player. Like, probably not many, if any. But yeah, we'll learn more about that at a later point in time. We can see Big Shot 55 and 46, amazing. And this 46 is still second place. Also, Illu beat Egypt in March 04, but there's no video, and there's no, like, good video of an Egypt run from back then. So... I'm unfortunately not going to show Egypt being completed this time around, but of course, we will get to it in a future episode. And so there are two more runs to show. 
And we can kind of tell these levels are getting a little bit more like crazy. <laughs> um, statue. Statue is a very interesting level because there are three types of spawning guards who always like, okay, two sets of spawning guards and three total sets of guards. At first you have KF7 guards who shoot you and they keep spawning over and over again. There's like three pairs, so six total that keep spawning. Then once you talk to Valentin, they run away except for one pair who's still there to deal with. And then the Yanis guards spawn four at a time. And when they die, they keep respawning. And then at the end, it's Mishkin and his buddies. So it's a really weird level in that you kind of just run through it and hope the guards don't hit you. And I expect that's what we'll see here on this run. And it's going to be our final dedication run of the night as well. Dedicated to our Speedlord champion, FC Bojangles. A huge thanks to FC Bojangles for all your support of Speed Lore on Patreon. Let's watch a Wilder complete statue deal to K in March 19th, 2004. So yeah, he cuts the cinema right away, which makes sense because if you don't, the guards will spawn too close to you and like... It gives them more time to spawn and then run to you and you'll die every time. And so you just have to like hope that your position in relation to the guards is like they're behind a statue. So now you talk to Val, those guards no longer bother you, the KF7 guards. You probably get to Val, you know, once every five or ten times, maybe, you know. Now after Val, there is still a pair of KF7 guards who will bother you, which is kind of insane. I don't know how he deals with them. And then you have to just like book it at the Yanis guards and hope they don't hit you. You have to hope all four, like, pull nades or sidestep. Or, like, shoot at the wrong line. Which happens, like, once in a hundred times. It's super rare. Okay, so he didn't get any spawning guards here, which might be because of the way he looked. The angle he was looking and so on. Now... You could pull off the Trev shot on DLTK, but obviously at this point in time we're not going to do that yet, you know, there's no point. Okay, so check this out. Sidestep. One or two shot on the wrong line. He got behind the statues to safety. Like, that's what you gotta do on this level, you just gotta hope it completes. And usually it won't. If anyone's played Statue DLTK, we'll dig up all the stats on it. Because, like, I'm guessing it's a 1 in 100 thing, maybe even more rare. And then, because... Okay, so the first set are running away and despawning. They don't shoot you at all. But because the guards have such fast enemy reaction time, they'll come chase you down pretty quick. They only don't chase you when the flight recorder has spawned or when you've picked it, when you've picked it up, I think. And so Wetter goes here, which is neat and hopes he gets the best spawn and like builds speed and grabs it, which is pretty cool. He doesn't. Luckily it's right here, he picks it up. And then he can run to the end safely. Natalia's there chasing after him. The mission guards don't shoot you unless you shoot them first, which is cool. But yeah, a lot can go wrong here. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's when you pick it up, the Yanis guards no longer attack you. 239, pretty decent. This is probably the most, like, speedrun-like run we've seen, you know? It was only... only would have been, you know, 19 seconds off world record at the time. Which is probably the closest to the world record of anything we've seen so far. Even closer to Archives, which is kind of funny. But yeah, that's a cool one. Very tough level to beat, and, you know, we'll gain more of an appreciation for that over the course of this. Oh, that's true. Runway would have been uh, 8 seconds off. Yeah, and yeah, so the kind of... Uh, vibe you'll find is that the more guards there are like spawning pursuing guards the faster you have to be right that's a good strategy is just be fast and outrun the guards a lot now the last one we're going to see was the, the 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 next and final 
level to be completed in March 04. Everything was a few months later beyond this. So we've seen Dam Facility Runway, Bunker 1, Frigate, Surface 2, Bunker 2 Statue, Archives, Egypt, and we can see it, and now Surface 1. So that's 11 of the 20 levels were beaten in the first two months of play. Yeah, that's right, so is 38. So, we've beaten half the levels. This is the 11th level to be beaten, Surface 1. Interestingly, actually, the world record database shows this run, which is like six minutes, as the first run ever completed on Surface 1 DLTK. But recently, Axel Z actually unearthed some really old Illu videos, including like some Surface 1 12 minutes and 10 minutes. And I would show those, but um, they don't have in-game sound. So, and nor does this one, so I'll only show the one. Yeah, 12, 17, then 10, 56, and then uh, this one, um, 6, 44. Now, the thing with Surface 1, and I'm not sure how much of it we'll see necessarily, but nowadays we know that there are the set guards in cabins and patrolling, and then there are three spawning guards, and they can either spawn with the Clob or the Sniper. If they spawn with the Sniper, you're dead, no matter what. So you're hoping to get three Clob spawns. Now, mathematically, winning three coin flips, see so the coin flip being Clob or Sniper, would be one in eight. So one in eight runs would be winnable on Surface 1. But it seems like, from experience, it happens less often than that. So, very few runs can even have a chance of completion. Now, early on, Illu really does a lot of interesting stuff that we're going to see through the course of this run. It looks like he was using 1.1 control star there as well. He probably hadn't switched to 1.2 yet. It was early on in his career. And so the guards spawn right away on 007 mode with a 100% enemy reaction. On 00, you have to like cross a certain threshold for them to start spawning. So let's just see what he does. I'm, if I remember correctly, seeing this level a long time ago, he does a lot of like hiding on the small towers and taking out guards that way. You also do, and you see he follows the tree line, which reduces the chance of him getting shot at by the KF-7 patrolling guards. Okay, so he's going to go here and complete one of the objectives right away, which makes sense. You do also get grenade launchers on Surface 1, and so I think that's the technique he does. Oh yes, okay, so he starts going up here and taking out guards. Which is like a sensible, intuitive strategy, you know? He tries to lure guards over here, he's going to lure them in a big pile, and then he's going to kill them all. Really, he shouldn't be shooting the clob guards. He should be leaving the clob guards alive, because by killing them, it... Oh my god. I guess they can't shoot up the stairs that narrow. No, it totally is retroflex. I used to have the record on it for many years, so like I, I kind of know a little bit. But it's like... You shouldn't shoot the clob guards because then they can respawn and they might respawn as a sniper guard, which is way more threatening. But like at this point in the early stages, he probably doesn't know this. Yeah, I've thought about playing Surface 1 DLTK, but I just, I, I played a little bit and just I could never vibe with it, you know? Sometimes it'd be like that. See, all the guards are here, which is cool. Now I wonder if... He may actually shoot only the KF-7 and snipers, which would be the intelligent thing to do. I'm just not sure how much of the knowledge was known at the time. That guard definitely has a KF-7. It's kind of weird how they run over here. Yo, totally it would, SMG. 100% it would. I've actually never watched the Boson full LTK. That's pretty insane. I should watch it sometime. There will be a lot of Bozen coverage in this series. 
the DLTK lore series. So we will get to that at some point. I know they are having a party. It's kind of funny how like you shoot and then one runs to that spot. Like it's kind of weird. I can't imagine he kills them all, but like maybe he starts booking it at some point. I guess that's a good idea because they kind of get a little bit bottlenecked here. Like you could lure them up here and then run away, I guess. I wonder if he does that. Thanks, Pohewasu. We'll watch it again. We're almost, this is the last run of the lore. And then we'll watch it and hang out a little bit, you know? Okay, so we've seen the guards are approaching here. What's he going to do now? That's epic dovetail. I mean, you could lure them up here, run around. Oh my god, this is like so scary. Like as if this was the strategy he came up with. To lure them around the building. I mean, it's a good idea. And like, I think the way guards seek you, if they haven't seen you in five seconds or something, they no longer like pursue you. So I guess his idea was to trap all the guards in that room and they haven't seen you and they don't know where you are and so they just kind of stay put until they see you again. So it's like a good idea, but it just seems hard to pull off at first. Now he's got to get the big key and there's two guards in this room, so that might like Probably both of them are going to come out. Oh, I see. Oh, I see what he's going to do. So he's going to play a lot of ring around the building. Oh my god, that's scary as hell. That is so scary. Now he's got the GL though. And so we can just shoot a GL here, which is a good idea. I would have shot one in the corner already. Because it would affect the guard outside. Oh, this is insane. Oh my god, that's scary. He could have, like, you could have messed that up and killed yourself on the fire damage, you know? Got the large key. Now over here are two KF7 guards by another building who could easily see you. There's a guard chasing him, which is also scary. Oh, he's just gonna, I guess, yeah, you can go at that angle and make it. That's a good idea. But this is still, like, really scary. Oh my god. It's possible that those KF7 guards saw him earlier and, like, ran towards him and got lured and they were dealt with at the tower. It's at least plausible. So now he's going to here, he's at the safe, and then he just has to leave the level. So this, like, might be it. Let's see. Grabs the safe. <gasps> he missed the safe. Oh, yeah, there it is. Is he going to get trolled? Oh, my God. So there's a guard coming at him. I would... Oh, well, I guess, yeah, just leave it. It's tempting to fire a grenade launcher at him, but, like, yeah, leave it. Better to leave it. Not risk doing anything silly. But he's going to come over here. This is insane. I mean, you even die here on double O agent getting hit at the last second. Oh! <gasps> Oh my god, that stopping there was like, I would not have done that. Because you can just make it up and then shoot off one or two locks you missed. I mean, he, could, he should have shot two grenade launchers, but hey, it is what it is. He did it. He did it, baby. He did it. It's amazing. Surface 1, DLTK 644. It's truly amazing and utterly remarkable. Unbelievable. Congratulations. It's our epic pal, Mr. Moxie, who's shown up. The speed lore champion himself. And yeah, I mean, more people have run LTK. Uh, people do still run frequently, Rod. Absolutely. So it's pretty epic stuff. And uh, <laughs> yeah, our pal, our pal Moxie. Good to see you. And hey, just in time for the wrap-up. What a wonderful time to show up as we're finishing the amazing episode. The first episode of GoldenEye DLTK Speed Lore. We've seen the completion of 10 levels. We know 11 have been beaten. Will Silo 
streets, depot, train, control, caverns, cradle, Aztec ever be completed, ever be beaten? My friends, stay tuned and watch this space to find out. With that, a huge thanks to everyone for coming out and chatting tonight. It was really a remarkable stream and time. Unexpected night in the speed lore world. A huge thanks to everyone watching on YouTube as well. And of course, all these wonderful speed lore legends. A big thanks for everyone who supports speed lore still as we enter this next chapter of speed lore, the DLTK series. I hope you've all enjoyed this first episode of DLTK Speed Lore. There's certainly a lot more to come. Next time we'll find out what other levels were completed in the early next year or two of the existence of DLTK. Might any levels be impossible? Well, to speedrunners, that can be a foolhardy word to challenge them with. So, my friends, that'll do it for this episode of Speed Lore. Thank you all for watching. Stay true, my friends, and I'll see you in the next stream or video. Good night. <laughs>